Yeah, I figured you want one of those because it get real hot real quick yeah, under these yeah. lights. I drink water all day anyway, so no, I, feel I appreciate you. it. All right, you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another sober edition of Across the Table, <laughs> where the water is cold, the com- the mics are hot, and the conversations are fire. Sitting across the table for me is firearm instructor, yep. Robert Lee. I invited him on the show. This is going to actually be a two-parter. I invited him on this show because of the recent events and I wanted to get an opinion about this from someone that's actually in the game. So ladies and gentlemen, Robert Lee, here's to you. How you doing? Man? We toasting water today. For sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> my name is actually Robert Gray. Robert Lee is just a Facebook. It, Lee is my middle name. Lee is my middle name. I should have known that too. <laughs> that's, it's fine. I should have known that. You'd be surprised how many questions I get. Like, you related to Robert E. Lee? <laughs> right. But but see, the thing is, like, I know your mom and your dad from the dancing. Yeah. Oh, you saw you should. Yeah. So I yeah. but I saw you. I, I, I had to address you Facts. the way that you Facts. publicly was yeah. adri- being addressed. Yeah. So I, I just out of understand. You understand I understand. What I'm saying? I understand. So I always start this off by asking. Everybody, this one question. How are you? Like, not Rob, the firearm instructor, not Rob, the workout junkie, not Rob, the employee. How are you as a person? Like, how are you doing? I'm in a good place. I'm in a good place. Uh, really settled, uh, comfortable, but not comfortable in a sense to where I'm settling but I'm comfortable as always strive to do better. Family life is awesome. Um, I couldn't say that two years ago, but um, (laughs) family life is, 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 is awesome. And I can honestly say that I'm in a good place. Honestly. That is awesome to hear Mm -hmm. because as men, we don't really ask that question. Right. And, a huge aspect of what we're going to be talking about is mental health and a small, how are you as a person can change the trajectory of somebody's entire day. You understand what I'm saying? And like I said, me as men, us as men, we don't do that. So that's why I always start my shows off like that. Now let's get into it. You're a firearm instructor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What made you get interested in that industry? Um, that's a long story, but, uh, 13 years ago, uh, somebody had threatened my life, um, uh, bought my first firearm, uh, had my, I just bought my house. Um, somebody screenshotted my house to me. So I felt like it was a time where I needed to get something. So I bought uh, my first firearm, Springfield XDM 3.8 inch nine, uh, 40 cal. And I have no idea what you just I, said. I know you didn't. I just I just said it anyway. Just, so you can give me that look like what you speaking Mandarin over here. <laughs> no, um, I bought it. I shot it for the first time and then I was hooked. I was hooked and it just sent me on a trajectory to where I'm at right now. Um, I was very knowledgeable in firearms, taking classes, being the only black dude amongst 40, 50 white dudes shooting. And um, I brought that that um that knowledge back to our community and then I just been hearing for so long Rob you need to teach Rob you need to teach Rob you need to teach so I took the steps to become an RA instructor and I sat on that certification for like a year and did nothing with it and then one day I was just like what are you doing now <laughs> now did you sit on it because it was this fear of doing something I new I was scared I was scared. Now I'm honest to God. I'm not, I'm not, I'm a Leo, but I'm a different type of Leo. So I'm not like the Leo that wants to just be up in front of everybody talking and doing all that stuff. So I had a little bit of stage fright. And, um, but once I did my first, my first class, it was over with, it was over with. I've done probably about 30, 35 classes already. So yeah, within a year. So, Wow. 
That's a lot of classes within, a, lot within of classes. a year. With a lot of classes, a lot of people. Yep. That That's a lot of progression. Now, let me ask. Is it about having the power to protect yourself at all times? Or is it just having that power of having a firearm, period, that draws people to it? I think w- women is different. It's different for, between men and women. I think women see their vulnerability in some ways, especially with, hey, what's up, Shouty? How you doing? No, I'm good. Well, F you didn't be. You know what I'm saying? Just that that fear that at any time a dude can flip the switch on you. And do you have that that tool, that equalizer? So I think women go forward as some women go forward as this is my personal protection, especially the single mothers and stuff like that. And then you have the dudes that, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm, I got a gun and stuff like that. Then you got a lot of dudes that do it just because this is a tool like a hammer. And I am going to, if need be, use it if I have to. What are the basic steps to properly own a firearm like basic you don't have to go into details because i know you teach on this but just at base bone bare bones level what's step one through maybe two or three uh criteria what do you want it what do you what do you want this firearm for um some people home defense some people want to carry um is it a self-defense situation um has somebody threatened your life uh, are you collecting something like that? But if you want to own one, go to the store. You, m- most people research. I research every firearm that I've ever bought. I've researched it. Um, go to the gun store, fill out a 4473, which is your background check. And you fill it out, buy that firearm, take it home. Um, that's you want to get bare bones about it that's pretty much what that is any class or certification necessary so you don't need a class to buy a firearm all you need is to do the background check the 4473 which is the next check which is wait a minute wait a minute you don't have to take a class to show that you can use a firearm to get a firearm no the only thing that you need to do to get a firearm is to fill out a, a background check. Now, to get your CCW prior to June 10th, June 20th, June 10th or 20th, you needed to take a class. The classes are still offered. However, after June 10th or 20th, whatever, you will not necessarily have to take a class to be able to carry a gun concealed. What do you think about that piece of legislation behind it? Because I feel like if I got to take a test to drive a car, I should be able to you sh- I should have to take a test to own a piece of metal that could potentially take a life. So you have two realms of thought when it comes to that. You got some people that say having a firearm is a constitutional right. Driving a car is not a constitutional right. Um your constitutional rights should not be inhibited by the state because what the state does is I charge you my fee to get your CCW. The state charges you a fee as well, $65 to process it and to get a card. Some people say like, Oh, you mad because of the law because it messes with your business. I mean, my time, Yes, that's my time. My Saturdays when I go and I train people away from my family, I you want to be compensated for it. But for my class, I could be charging way more than I am, but I'm not. Um, I don't like the law only because it erases the law aspect, because a lot of people, when they get or carry a gun, depending on their instructor, they have no idea what the law is. So if you're not looking at the the Ohio revised code in the firearm section 
about not caring inside of a school or not caring inside of a church or not carrying a gun while you're intoxicated or under the influence of marijuana or any other drug, you're in violation of the law. But a lot of people don't know that because how would they? Nobody's taught them. So now you got a situation where you're going to pass this law, which I think is a, a setup for black people a lot because black people have a lot more interactions with the police. So we have a lot more interactions with the police surprises and the police don't mix. So if a cop pulls you over and you got a gun. So normally when, let me, let me digress by saying this. When a cop pulls me over and he runs my license plate, he sees that I have a CCW because it comes up on my license. If I have constitute, if I'm constitutional carry, if I'm constitutionally caring and the cop pulls me over, something prompts him to want to ask me to get out the car. I don't tell him I have a firearm because in this law, I'm not obligated to tell this police officer that I'm carrying a firearm. So in Robert's rule of law is what can go wrong? What will go, will wrong. go wrong? So he asked me to get out the car. I got a gun on me. I don't tell him it's a surprise how many we've been shot for less. So that's pretty much, I, I just, I just have a, I just have a sneaky suspicion that this is just not going to be a good law, but I, I can go on and on about that, but I've had many conversations about that. No, I, I, and that's why I brought you here because of all of the recent events that have been happening, all of the opinions that everybody has, Facebook, the mainstream media, like all of these people have all of these opinions about firearm reform and what they should and shouldn't be doing. And I figured I'd ask you because right. you're in there. Right. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? So I'm still bugging over the fact that you don't have to take a class anymore to, to, to actually get a never, gun. You never had to take a class. That was never a thing. That's never been a thing. Wow. Yeah. And so working at, so I worked at a gun store too. So I see people come in to buy guns. They can pass a background check, but they shouldn't have a gun. Some of them. How do you make that conscious choice? Okay, so the law states that it is up to the discretion of the seller whether whether or not they pass a background check or not. I don't have to sell them that gun. I know gun stores in the city right now who tell me, uh, yeah, they can pass a background check. They did pass a background check, but I'll pl plainly look at the 44 the the results on the next check and it says proceed and i'll be like you got denied because either their mental state is not there you know common sense ain't common true that it's some plum nut crazy folks out here true <laughs> that so there are some nut cases out here there's some there's some nut cases out here so why would i sell you a gun knowing that you are mentally unstable even though you can pass a background check i mean it's just it's up to the discretion of the seller pretty much They were, basically. Now the whole gun reform conversation is happening. What do you think about the gun reform in general? And what does gun reform look like coming from somebody in the industry? Like what could you possibly do to prevent something like that from happening. So, and I'm taking a page from Kanye because 
you just don't want to just talk. You want to think about your response before you just blurt out something. I figured I would come to the only guy I knew. That's yeah. why I yeah. that's why I haven't said anything about it, because I there are things about this that I don't know. And I don't want to be this guy that's, that's just reacting on what we see, because I know that there's a deeper issue other than this dude just shot up 18 kids and three teachers because he just felt like I you there has to be. Yeah. I, yeah, I understand. So um, I've been in my head about all of this since Buffalo. Um, let me preface that by saying this politically. Democrats and Republicans go to extremes on both ends. And when you go to extremes on both, both ends, there's never a solution to be met, to be had pretty much. You got Democrats saying, we're going to ban this. We're going to ban that. Then we got Republicans saying, we don't want to talk about guns, period. Let's not politicize this. Let's not do this. But when is the right time to politicize anything if you keep saying, let's not politicize it because it keeps happening? Um, Democrats says, let's ban this. Let's background checks. Then da, 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 and then they get on TV and they lie about certain things and so I had seen one Democrat say 80% of Republicans or NRA members believe in background checks and 70% believe in an assault weapons ban, which that was a lie. Just throwing out numbers, just, just throwing to throw out, out numbers. Exactly. And so when, when gun owners see that and they know that they're lying, then everybody goes into their shell and then nobody wants to talk about it. Me, myself, HIPAA is a big, hindrance right now because you cannot couple mental health records with your next background check and i think that is a major hindrance to the background check elaborate so your mental records if when i when i fill out a 4473 we send that off to the atf the federal government the next check they run a background check, a thorough background check on that person. If you have the same name as somebody who's committed a heinous act, they will delay you and go do further research to make sure that that is not you. They will either. So when you when you fill out a Nix, uh, a 4473, they have three, three results, proceed, delay or deny. Sometimes they come back immediate. Sometimes they come back and say it's going to be delayed for four days. Come back on this day. We will give you an answer within these four days. So that person either is going to be proceeded or de or denied at the end of them four days. OK, so now we got a situation where. This guy in. Texas turned 18 filled out a background check passed every gun that has been used in most of these mass murder mur murders was bought lawfully they weren't bought at gun shows they weren't bought privately they were bought at a store that person filled out a background check, passed the background check, used that same gun to kill a whole bunch of people. So what law can we implement that will stop this? Can we raise the age to 21? I don't know. But that still doesn't solve the mental health aspect of it. it Raising the age does nothing. It does not. It does not. Um, I, see, I, I don't know because you don't know people crazy until they do crazy stuff. It might be some crazy people out here that may be labeled crazy. That's a dude right there on the corner on Hill and, Hill and Burn. 
Craziest, craziest dog in a hubcap factory. <laughs> <laughs> As a well, dog in a hubcap, yeah, <laughs> just running around, just <laughs> running around being <laughs> <and> stuff. <laughs> so, but you know he crazy, right? Right. But everybody doesn't have that label. Everybody ain't standing on the corner with a sign saying I'm crazy. You got a lot of people that's just really like, oh, I'm gonna kill some people today. Because I've been bullied, because I've been this, because I've been that, social media, I'm weird, I'm a loner, I'm a nerd, I'm just going to kill some people today. My dad ate the last chicken nugget. I'm about to flip out. Dude in Texas, literally, I guess his grandmother grandma, grandmother did something to him. He wrote on Facebook, I am going to kill my grandmother. Then he wrote, I'm going to shoot up an elementary school. On Facebook. Okay. I'm glad you mentioned that. And I know you're on a time constraint. So I'm Are you good? I'm I'm less less. <laughs> How do we get to the point where I don't even know how I want to phrase this question. Do you think the glamorization of having a weapon like that being shown all through social media and all of that plays a part in a lot of this? I think it can. Uh, our media in general, movies, video games, all of it, it glorifies that the tool. And I mean, I have multiple rifles. So, um, I, I look at it this way. We was growing up, we had ratchet, we had ratchet music, right? Three, six mafia. Yeah. We had all that stuff. Yeah. We had, yeah. We had a lot of stuff. We had NWA. We had a lot of stuff. Death row and all Death of that. Death row and all of that. So mind you, but. They had radio versions. They had explicit versions. Then it wasn't just that on the radio. We had De La Soul on the radio. We had all these other cats on the radio. So it was, it was, it was multifaceted. That music. We had a lot of that music that we you, listened you to. You had a, a a a bunch of artists right. doing different things, different but things. still kind of sort of telling a story. Tribe Called Quest, all of them. So now. When you listen to the radio now, it's even hard to even look at, listen to what it is. It's just the same stuff over and over again. So now, what do we see now? We got violence, 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 sex. violence, sex, all this stuff. Again. Sex again. And then you got bullying. You got, you got people. If you're not, if you are not part of this type of if you don't have the J's, if you if you don't have this if you don't have that if you don't have the designer clothes if you don't have all of this stuff you are not one of us you are not part of that group so now you got a lot of kids that are left out you got a lot of kids that are left out of stuff they feel they feel not part of the group so then they're alienated. So now you got a situation where they they dive into social media. They dive into all of these dark places. And then they have access to firearms. So I bet you this the first thing he did, the dude in Texas, the first thing he did on his 18th birthday was go buy two AR 15s. Do you think a gun like that should be in stores for civilians to buy? Uh, yes, yes. And I mean, it's kind of like, you hear me talk the way I talk, but then I, I, I say yes, because what are we going to do? Are we going to ban the AR-15, which is the most popular semi-automatic rifle in this country? And I mean, and when I say popular, I mean, 
hundreds of millions. Not 1 million, 2 million, not 10 million, 12 million. We're talking about hundreds of million. I can pick up a 870, a lever action with my training and do the same amount of damage as he did with an AR-15. I can use a bolt action and do the same amount of damage at longer distance than he did with training. Like, there are so many other weapons out here. So my main thing is um, a lot of people say, well, these guns were made for killing. All guns were. They ain't make guns to shoot in the air. They made them to kill people. That's what guns were made for. Browning, uh, Henry, uh, Henry Browning made the 1911 in 1911. He didn't make it just because he made it to kill as a weapon of war. And it's a handgun. Every gun is every gun is a weapon of war. It just depends on what war we were facing. We were fighting. So a nine millimeter is a devastating round. It's moving, it's moving at 1300 feet per second. Yes. A 10 millimeter is moving at 1750 feet per second. All of these guns are going to, especially little bodies. Whose bones haven't hardened yet. Whose flesh hasn't been through 40 years of winter and stuff like that and hard and stuff like that. They're going to cause damage. So we're going to ban AR-15s and then they're going to start using nine millimeters and 10 millimeters and shotguns, stuff like that. Then they're going to try to ban those. And then they're going to try to ban is So what, so when we say there, there's a, there's a, there's not a slippery slope. There is a slippery slope. However, when people say it, it was like, Oh, that's, that's not true. It, it is in a certain sense. When you base level it, I get what you're saying. Like there, I don't think that there's a firearm created that doesn't, that wasn't meant to kill, but I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I don't think there's a civilian alive that needs a gun, an assault rifle. I've said like when we were talking the other day right. said, unless you're guarding a monarch or a public figure or a politician, you don't need an AR 15. Like you don't. However, when does it get to the point where, we can fix this without infringing on the rights of the people that actually did it right. You understand what I'm saying? And that goes back to what we, what I talked about earlier about everybody goes to their corner and they don't want to move to the middle. I will concede. Red flag laws. If we can get it to the point where there won't just be frivolous, a, my baby daddy got on my nerves. I'm calling. He don't need no guns. And they just come take his guns. That I'm totally against that. But if it is a mother calling, my son is really in a dark place. And he keeps talking about wanting to buy a gun. And this, 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 this. If this boy had been in school and he talking about he literally threatened somebody's life. Or he's talking about doing some morbid type stuff. Let's red flag this dude. Let's get him. Let's be proactive because the thing is, is that the police are reactionary. They are not proactive. I can call. Do you know how many women have called the police and said, my ex-boyfriend, my ex-husband is trying to kill me. And, ah, you know, we can do no, we can do. And then three weeks later, he kills her. Happens all the time. The police are reactionary. They are not proactive. So now what do we do? So we're just going to, like I said before, I am not super steadfast. No more legislation. However, we need to enforce these laws that's on the books. Do you know how many kids 
who commit a murder when they're 15, 16, 17 with an illegal firearm and then get out when they're 18, 19 and then do the same thing. Because they're juveniles. They're juveniles. But you've committed a crime with a firearm. Enforce the laws that are on the books. You enforce the laws that are on the books, then maybe we can move on. May, then maybe a lot of these murders and stuff that's going on in our community will they're not never going to stop but they can go down yeah we can put a dent in it at least we can put a dent however i like i said i have multiple ars i have multiple rifles other than ars aks whatever they in the safe i go to the gun range i have a ball going to the gun range i am going to tennessee tomorrow for a huge black two-way gun meetup in Nashville, Tennessee, 300 plus going to be down there. It's going to be big fun. It's going to be a whole lot of shooting. <laughs> <Big> <laughs> it's going to be big fun. <laughs> it's weird. It's it, recreational. We have a, we have an award show for black two-way gun members. The black two-way move, movement is huge. So when I say, so when we talk about banning stuff, it's not, this is the misconception. People say, when they think about AR-15s, they think about country white boys, racist white dudes, Confederate flags driving down the street. Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! You get on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they think of. But really, you got hundreds of thousands of brothers out here who run these guns who do they thing with these guns who protect their community with they with these guns who teach other people in the community with these guns me included I'll be in uh, Carlton Michigan Next month, Juneteenth, for AR class with a brother from Texas. I'm training all year round. That's what I do. We are deep. So we talk about banning stuff. You're going to have a whole lot of pushback, not only from folks over here, but from your own community, brothers in your own community. That's going to be looking at you like, what? Nah, bro. It's not going down. And. Gun control, the first type of gun control was designed to disarm black people. The black codes. After slavery, no black person can have a firearm because when the Ku Klux Klan rolled up on you, they didn't want to get shot. When they came to your house at two o'clock in the morning to take your boy looking at a white girl they ain't want no resistance we gonna take your boy and we don't want you shooting at us no black people no black people can have guns when Huey P. Newton and uh, the Black Panthers walked up in the, the California uh, legislator with them shotguns and them rifles Ronald Reagan they passed the law for black people not to be able to open carry it wasn't just black people they just said nobody can open carry but it was directed right after the black panthers went into the state legislature in california every form of gun confiscate every form of gun legislation gun reform was always directed towards black people an unarmed an unarmed society it's a weak society you can't defend yourself so that's why a lot of people say if you try to ban this What's going to stop you from trying to ban anything else? I show video after video after video after video after video in my classes where home invasions, people running up on you, multiple, four or five dudes running up on you. And you want me to have 10 rounds? I want 30, 60, 100. I don't give a, I don't care. I don't care. I I want 
a force equalizer. But I'm also trained. I'm also 41. Do I believe an 18 year old should go and buy a Daniel Defense M4? Not necessarily. I'm going to watch this back and I'm going to Google every gun that you've spoken about. And, 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 and what's really what's real is that's what I want you to do. So when I say these guns, Shadow System DR920, when I say these guns, I want you to look, look them up. And when people say assault rifles, it's not an assault rifle. It's a semi-automatic rifle. Assault rifle is what the media calls it to scare the hell out of people. So it was a propaganda move. It's always been a propaganda move. Always. It's it, everything that the media do is propaganda, especially when it comes to guns. So the many times that an AR-15 or a, a, a pistol has been used to save lives, they never report on it. And this countless times a little boy who was 15 protected his family's house after three dudes shot a break in with an AR-15 happened to Texas they don't report on that I gotta I, I, I gotta bring you back I have to bring you back man I it, this is this is a must because this is a conversation that needs to be had because like I said you have a lot of knowledge that a lot of us don't know which is why i'm glad to hear that you started your class and the reason why you did it because you're doing it the right way and you're teaching people how to do things the right way and not just going in some place blind saying hey i need this and thinking because they saw a movie that they know how to use it john wick is a, it's john wick is everything people be thinking they can go in there like john wick no 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 there are consequences like that dude the cop in buffalo he shot dude, but he had body armor on. Ting, and he had an AR-15. It was it was over with after that. So you never know how you're gonna react in a situation like that. I feel you. Yeah. I feel you, Mr. Gray. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. This is this is dope. This is dope. I appreciate you coming by, man. Like I said, I gotta have you back. Because sure. the basis of my platform is about husbands and about fathers, and you're both. So I want you to come back and talk about that. We're going to touch a little bit on this, too, when you come back, too. Okay. We're going to get together. We're going to schedule that. Plug your class. Okay, so um, Blacked Out Tactical uh, LLC. Um, you can uh, – CCW class. I actually got a CCW class coming up on June 4th. That's uh, 9 to 5, and – Classes are ninety five bucks, um, two for one fifty. Um, you can reach out to me uh, on Facebook, Robert Lee on Facebook, Robert Lee. So that's why I called. <laughs> I know Robert Lee, or you can call you can call, you can call me at four one nine four six six three four three zero, or call my wife uh, Kelly at five six seven eight six eight eight three one six. I'll have all of that in the description too. So. You watch the video. If you made it to the end, you can write it down. If not, you can click on the description and you can catch all of that. Schedule your classes with my man if you want to know how to do this the right way. So, this has been part one of Across the Table, where the water is cold, the mics are hot, and the conversations are fire. So, till next time, in a minute. <laughs>